souls! Your feeble vessels hold no power in the depths below. That's got to be the best part I've ever seen. So it would seem. Hey guys, what is going on? Chris here with Shughead Gaming, bringing you my review for Battlewake, developed by Servios. Battlewake releases on PSVR, Index, Vive, and Windows Mixed Reality, but as always, this review will be on the PSVR version and reviewed on a PS4 Pro. Battlewake releases this September 10th, 2019. However, the EU release for PSVR has been delayed with no definite release date. Set sail in Battlewake, a rip-roaring ship-to-ship combat game exclusively for virtual reality. Become a mythical pirate lord, captain a massive battleship, and wield ancient magics as you embark on a larger-than-life nautical war for the ages. Coming from Servios, easily the best and most consistent developer of made-for-VR titles, the anticipation and expectations of Battlewake are high. Do they deliver for the fifth time in a row? Let's find out. As always, guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button, and if you'd like to see more PSVR content from me, please consider subscribing. And for video updates, hit that bell icon. Starting off this review, let's take a look at graphics. To be honest, when I first saw Battlewake being played at E3, I was pretty sure that this would be Servios' first title to go PC only. With wide open levels, water physics, and often intense multiplayer action, I simply did not see how this could be pulled off on the aging PS4 hardware. Well, I'm happy to report I was definitely wrong, for not only has Servios delivered what was advertised, but also managed to do so with the 10-player PvP mode intact. With no mention of a pro mode at launch, Battlewake still manages to competently deliver on the promise of open sea combat, the likes of which we haven't seen since Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Speaking of which, let's put a pin in that as I will circle back to that topic when we get to gameplay. Standing on the quarterdeck, your ship around you looks expectedly solid with a mixture of decent and not-so-decent textures delivered with only a minimum amount of aliasing issues. With fully animated cannons firing off in the aggressive flap of your sails above, you really feel the sense of open-air naval combat. Unfortunately though, sailing into the rough seas ahead is a lonely affair as your ship deck is void of any other sailors, leaving you to manor alone. While world detail is at a minimum, draw distance is shockingly decent and mostly free of annoying jagged edges or blurriness, ensuring the enemy ships can be seen and tracked pretty far out, allowing for enough breathing room to feel authentic while allowing players the space to get away and regroup for another attack. Enemy ships, whether of the NPC variety or manned by another human player, seem to have been handled with much the same care as your own ship, looking, moving, and acting as they should. Ship variety, especially on the NPC side of things, could have been greater as could have been the variety of land-based targets, but special mention must be given to the feel of sailing up on a lead ship and feeling the size and heft as it dwarfs your own. This sense of scale was often felt throughout my time with Battlewake, and often when the game felt at its best and most impressive. As cannon fire arched over my sails, skyscraper-sized krakens attacked enemy ships, and tornadoes swirled up the seas, Battlewake can at times really impress. This was often helped and hurt almost equally with the water effects on offer, for while the water could look fairly impressive for VR standards when rolling and pitching across the surface, it could at times look equally ugly when splashes turned to flat sprites or waves broke through the ship textures. Those expecting Assassin's Creed level water effects will be disappointed, as what is here is certainly passable, but definitely lacks the life and finesse that we have seen in other titles. Unfortunately, with a lack of weather or time of day variety, we are left with simply five set levels, each with their own lighting and graphical aesthetic. Variety across these five levels is impressive, and at times downright beautiful, but it still grows stale rather quickly. All in all, Battlewick exceeded my expectations of what I thought possible on this generation of PlayStation hardware, and delivered a very competent vision of arcade naval warfare. It's not without its shortcomings, but ultimately it still delivers where it needs to. Sound is up next. They're after our treasure, Captain! Do not let them beat us there! Okay, they're going a lot faster than we are. Let's blow a hole in the rudder! I keep mentioning the Assassin's Creed series as it relates to its portrayal of 17th century naval battle because I think it partially spoiled me moving forward. 
Jumping into the gameplay of Battle Wake, everything here sounds just fine. Wind whistles past your head, waves slap the sides of your ship, and deck cannons crackle as they fire off rounds. Unfortunately, if like me you have spent countless hours sailing the seas in Ubisoft's version of the open seas, it's hard not to find Battle Wake's soundscape rather lifeless. Absent here are the small details, whether it be sounds of a busy crew, the creaks from a hull, seagulls flying overhead, or the force of weather on the open seas. On top of this, cannons and explosions seem to also lack the punch one would expect, or at times drop out of the sound mix entirely. Voice acting by the various captains is handled nicely, although never really leaned on for much more than setting up a mission or yelling taunts from the deck of your ship. Absent, however, is much in the way of music, leaving battles void of music and coming off as a missed opportunity to create a more compelling atmosphere. All in all, Battlewick never does anything particularly wrong, but it also feels a little paint by numbers on the sound side of things, making for a particularly weak outing when compared to some of Servios' prior VR entries. And that brings us to gameplay. When it comes to VR developers, no one comes close to the quality and consistency of Servios. With raw data, Sprint Vector, Electronauts, and Creed Rise to Glory to their name, they have demonstrated time and time again that they can be counted on to make high-quality arcade-style VR titles that not only innovate, but sell. Despite a few first-day glitches, Battlewake, staying true to this formula, delivers arcade-style 17th century naval combat on the open seas. Jumping into the single-player side of things offers up the choice of either campaign mode or warfare mode. The campaign is told from the point of view of four different captains, consisting of five missions each, bringing the total mission count to a rather short 20. Clocking in around three to four hours, the campaign lacks much in the way of any real narrative, variety, or progression. As such, it serves as more of a glorified tutorial on each captain's unique abilities to prepare you for the online side of things. For those looking for more gameplay but not wanting to go online, they will find the warfare mode more to their liking. Essentially, a horror mode, this is where the bulk of your solo time will be spent as you level up your ship and purchase upgrades to better compete in the waves ahead. Unfortunately, this is completely absent from the campaign side of things, offering a rather shallow one-and-done playthrough. Heading over to the multiplayer side of things sees this same warfare mode on offer, but now with the option of four-player co-op to liven things up. In addition, a campaign mode is also present, but now offering up the ability of two-player co-op. However, I assume most players looking to multiplayer for some open seas action will be found in the multiplayer-only mode titled Plunder, in which is essentially a free-for-all battle for up to 10 players at one time. The various modes aside, and looking specifically at gameplay, sees Battlewake borrow heavily from the style of combat made famous by the Assassin's Creed games, most notably the absolutely amazing Black Flag title in the series. Taking a stripped-down version of this into VR has the player literally manning the wheel of his or her ship and steering it into combat. Controls here can be handled by either a DS4 or two move controllers, but really should be played with the moves for the full effect. Turning the wheel hand over hand while the ship begins to react is VR gold and almost worth the price of admission here alone. Front, rear, or side guns are fired based on a combination of what side of the ship is open to an enemy and the aiming of either your left or right hand, and often done in conjunction with which hand is on the wheel at any given time. Speed control is unfortunately automatic, but admittedly isn't missed much in the heat of combat. That being said, for tight last minute turns you can grab the anchor release when you need to avoid an incoming mortar shot or a quickly approaching obstacle. In addition to four different ships, each with their own unique capabilities and stats, you can also choose from four different captains, each with his or her own pair of attacks. These can range from such things as a speed boost, perfect for ramming or flanking, spikes on the ship's hull, or even such wild attacks such as casting out a tornado or raising a kraken from the ocean's depths, and then casting it on your enemies. Unfortunately, the variety in these ships and their captains only serves to highlight the game's one real gameplay weakness in the form of its rather shallow combat. Sailing your ship and taking it into combat, whether solo or online, is an undeniably fun and rather polished experience, but Battlewake simply runs out of ideas too quick. Absent is any of the crew or resource management found in the likes of Battle Blood, as is much in the way of any meaningful character or ship progression. You won't find any unique boss-type ships to hunt down or anything much in the way of memorable attacks on land bases short of a moment or two in the campaign. In addition, the easy to pick up and simplified nature of the ship controls, while quick to learn, also mitigates much in the way of combat depth outside of navigating each ship and the captain's strengths and weaknesses. Even in multiplayer where much of the depth can be found, we see only one PvP mode in the form of free-for-all. As such, I would have loved to have seen additional modes such as Conquest, Capture the Flag, or basically any objective-based type of mission to add some spice and variety to the multiplayer side of things. Battleweight can be played either sitting or standing with a moderate amount of room recommended and, as previously mentioned, can be controlled using either two move controllers or a DS4. 
considering you are sailing quickly over rising and falling waves, all while turning sharply and hanging out the side of your ship, Servios has done a brilliant job of mitigating VR sickness by having the ship movement only partially transferred to the player movement. Well, personally, I would have liked the option to turn this all the way up. Many wouldn't, and for those who find the movement still too much, you will find blinders in the option settings, among a few other comfort settings. All that being said, this still remains a high movement wave-based boat ride, so if you have motion sickness in VR, proceed lightly. And finally, that brings me to Fun Factor in my final review. Servios makes great VR games, plain and simple. These games are often highly polished and a lot of fun, but also a bit on the shallow side of things, as they are very focused on being easy to pick up and play. Despite a few glitches here and there, Battle Wake certainly fits this mold top to bottom as it is fun and accessible, but lacks much in the way of progression and gameplay depth. Graphics and sound-wise, Battle Wake is a bit of a mixed bag, as it can at times defy expectations, but then in others feel a bit phoned in, especially when compared to previous Servios titles. As you know, I hate number ratings and instead rate games on a basis of buy, wait for a sale, or burn it to the ground. At $30, I think Battle Wake is priced right if you're interested in the online component of the game, as that is where much of the replay value is. Sailing along and laughing with a bunch of friends in your own personal battleship is simple VR fun, making the lack of more robust content here matter much less. With cross-platform play, multiplayer should have some legs for the time being, but you will certainly want to pick this up while the player base is invested in it. For those strictly interested in the solo side of things, this could still be worth the asking price for you, as it still is a lot of fun, but just don't expect a lot of depth. Anyways guys, that's it for me. If you like this video, please hit that like button, and if you'd like to see more PSVR content from me, please consider subscribing, and for video updates, hit that bell icon. I'll catch you guys on my next video.